I've just spent half an hour walking through the rain back from town, back from my break today out of hospital on leave for a coffee in town. And um, I was writing this poem when I was in Cafe Nero all about um, people with the do mentality and the, uh, the kind of mentality that goes around saying that, you know, climate change is an inevitability and that we're doomed to failure as a species and all this sort of thing. And this, this pessimism that seems to override or underride everything that we... Uh, well, yeah, a lot of the media that we consume, right, and a lot of the um, the output on you know social media and so on focuses very much on catastrophe and the you know this idea you know it's always it's tempting to say the facts that we're going to cause our undoing, but um, I don't think it's anything like a fact at all. I don't think we are destined for failure necessarily at all. I don't think we're destined to blow ourselves up with hydrogen bombs. I don't think we're destined to cause a catastrophic greenhouse effect, if we're causing a greenhouse effect at all. Um, my, my own opinions on climate change and so on, I, they're out there in video form and in uh, written form as well, so you can read those at your leisure if you like. But this isn't gonna be a video so much about that, it's gonna be a video more about what we're capable of in the future and what we're really capable of doing. And um, you'll find, I think, it's the same sort of people, the reactionaries on the left, who will parrot the doom narrative of climate change while simultaneously spitting on Elon Musk and spurning him for everything that he's done and is doing, you know, while Elon Musk produces electric cars, right? And um, does what the environmentalist sort of hippie types wanted someone like that to do in the first place. And yet um, huge swathes of them now hate him, dislike him, it seems, while he's building these extraordinary machines, these rockets, and um, you know, like Starship, I think like when I saw that second launch of Starship, it was just one of the most powerful and dramatic things I'd ever seen, one of the most inspiring things I'd ever seen. To see, you know, a man like that launching this huge machine, twice the thrust of a Saturn V rocket, um, the size of a Saturn V rocket, but it's made out of steel. So there's this higher thrust to weight ratio and everything like that. And it's, um, it's an extravagant pleasure to be able to see something like that take off. And uh, the second stage of it separating and then it getting off, not into orbit, but or into space, I think, past the Kármán line and all this sort of thing. It was just an astonishing thing to see. And um, I think we, we are capable, so long as we don't, carry on with this naysaying, so long as we get behind people like Musk, and so long as we continue with the great human endeavour of space exploration and things such as this, and have for once possibly a slightly optimistic outlook, and, you know, stop shitting on people like that so much. <laughs> and, you know, I think like, a lot of it comes out of envy as well. Envy of a billionaire, right, who, um, you know, far from enjoying the billionaire lifestyle, it seems spends his entire time working. Spends his entire time working on his projects, and um, you know, this the the starship it implies something about the technology. If he were making that out of lighter weight materials, he could launch rockets the size of the Empire State Building. That's the thing, the Starship is a very, very different machine to the Saturn V, for instance. It's the same height, more or less, as the Saturn V. In fact, it's slightly taller, but um, it's made out of steel, whereas the Saturn V famously was made out of aluminium with every gram of extra weight shaved off of it basically, and it's this incredibly slim down, perfectly, very, very perfectly weighted machine that um, it was very, very light, whereas Starship is not very light <laughs> at all, and it's made out of a heavier material, and the implications of that technology are so exciting to me, and I can see the future, I think, that we're capable of building and we're capable of launching rockets the size of the Empire State Building, and I think we will be one day. Um, one day when, you know, hopefully when, right, knock on wood, when we have a Mars base, when we have a base on the moon as well, and we're starting to terraform Mars. And, um, you know, you think of these things, oh, that's impossible, we'll never do that. And there's kind of this throwaway attitude as a lot of people have to these sorts of things. 
but I don't have that. I think I used to have that, but I don't have that anymore. And I think even Elon Musk was, uh, you know, he in his interviews of him, I've heard him say he's like, we never thought this was going to work. We never thought this would be possible. But they've done it. They've, um, you know, even beyond his own estimations, they've achieved these incredible things. And um, yeah, I think we really are destined for an incredible future, hopefully. And I think like, even if there's nuclear war, I do think this also, I think even if there's nuclear war, it'll set us back by about a century. And then we'll get going with the space race again and getting to Mars and um, ensuring that we have a backup planet, right, that we're starting to terraform in case we have a nuclear holocaust again or something like that. And yeah, I really do have the utmost hope in our species and I think we one day, one day we'll get there. And it could be the next decade that we get there. And when we, if and when we do get there, it will be the greatest day of our species existence, just like the moon landing was. Um, the greatest thing humanity had ever done, landing on the moon. <laughs> and um, well, one of the greatest things, one of the greatest things we've ever done. The high point probably of the, 20, the 20th century landing on the moon and landing on the Mars would be the high on the Mars yeah would be the high point of the 21st century and then go beyond that even go get people out to the outer solar system have people you know in craft sailing around Jupiter exploring the icy moons of Jupiter Saturn Uranus Neptune have bases further out in the solar system have Mars as a more central base and it's exciting it's really, really exciting. It's a thrill to be alive at the moment. I love being alive in this day and age of the, the extremely advanced technology that we have. And um, yeah, and the environmental naysayers will say that, oh, but technology is destroying the planet and so on, and it's causing all these emissions and so on and so forth. It's like, yes, I think we're going to be able to, I think we'll be fine. I don't think there's going to be a runaway greenhouse effect. I don't think that we're going to do ourselves quite with climate change. Um, I think there's a lot that we can do about climate change. I think a more important issue than climate change is resource security and always has been, that we're more likely to blow ourselves up with hydrogen bombs than we are to um, yeah, cause a runaway greenhouse effect and cook ourselves all that way. I don't think that that's going to happen quite with quite as much likelihood as a nuclear war, say, with Russia could happen. Um, we've been brought very close to that already with the war in Ukraine. And uh, I think that we just need to find a sustainable alternative for fuel, fix the geopolitical situation with Russia and Ukraine. And um, yeah, I think we'll avert tragedy like that in the future with a bit of luck. And with a bit of luck, we'll, um, yeah, get to Mars in the, in the coming decades. And that would be such an exciting thing, would it not? See humanity set foot on Mars, to put down the first bases on Mars and start colonizing it. Would that not be the most extraordinary thing that you'd ever seen? I know it would for me, and that's one of the reasons why I want to stay alive. It's one of the things I live for. It's one of the things that uh, keeps me up at night and gets me out of bed in the morning thinking about these sorts of things and if there's any way I can contribute to it all and um, I even started my own space engineering company Astrodyne Rocket Jet and I'm trying to design a space tower you know with lift balloons and jet engines on it and all these sorts of things and um, I'm sure there'll be plenty of naysayers for that project <laughs> and um, yeah I'm well I think I have like some design ability anyway and you know it's not like Steve Jobs was a bad technologist and he has a similar educational background to myself so maybe I could be the Steve Jobs of space engineering I've looked into like kind of a few other people's backgrounds who become great space engineers and rocket engineers and um, they sometimes don't have degrees so I don't know maybe my chances aren't all that bad and I need to focus on that sort of stuff as well and yeah, still leave quantum gravity to one side, but focus on rocketry and jet propulsion and the space tower and fusion energy in space and fusion propulsion even. 
and maybe it's in these sorts of things where I could have some potential and where I'll find a niche possibly to sort of get my little ass into <laughs> and um, yeah exploit a niche I do like the name Astrodyne Rocket Jet I mean it does sound cool does it not it sounds like a cool company it's a cool name for something that is very cool I think a space engineering firm and yeah hopefully I can do that but yeah, it's, it's about living for more than oneself. Or living for oneself, obviously, and selfishly wanting to see things in the future, like humanity setting foot on Mars, and really wanting to see that. And I think I will, if I live long enough, I think I will see that. And I'm very excited by that prospect. And I do worry about nuclear war. Yeah, and I used to worry about, about climate change. Um, I worry about that a lot less than I, yeah, well, I worried about that a lot more than I do now. But yeah, I do worry about things in the world as well. But I don't, I don't invest in this pessimistic, doomsaying narrative that just, you know, seeks to preach that we're headed for inevitable calamity. I don't see it that way at all. I think we're headed for great things, potentially. Or very likely, actually. We're headed for greatness. Or even more greatness. I think, you know, we've come very far. The reason, the reason, by the way, Putin doesn't bomb the West is because of people like Elon Musk, and because of the respect that he has for him. So, in a sense, it's actually the likes of Elon Musk and these endeavours that keep us alive, that sustain us, that act as barriers to nuclear war, that act as a way of incentivizing hostile foreign nations against such atrocious prospects. But yeah, I mean, I think we have very good chances of survival and prospering and flourishing in the future. So I wanted to put that out there for you to consider.